Hey guys, and welcome to this very first episode here at Countries Explained. My name is Kenan, and I'll be your host today. Our mission is to provide you with amazing facts and knowledge from every single country in the world. Each video will cover a unique country, and we're giving you one episode on a weekly basis, because, you know, time and stuff. But hey, maybe one day we're doing this thing full time and can pump out videos on a daily basis. Let's see what happens, yeah? We honestly couldn't decide what country to start with. Sure, we could have gone alphabetically, but that kind of felt like something you'd do in 2006, right? Or we could have gone with the largest by population or something similar. Mm, yeah, that probably would have been a good idea. Anyways, we decided to just put a big map on the wall, chew on a piece of paper, and shoot it through a straw. Where the wet paper landed, that's the country we're starting with, and as you already know by the title of this video, we hit Denmark with the wet, pulp-like piece of paper. Which, if you think about it, is kind of weird since it's one of the smaller countries on the map. But hey, paper does fly in mysterious ways. But let's not waste any more time here and instead jump straight into our very first video. Denmark, it's your time to shine. So we're starting off with a segment we'd like to call Quick Country Overview. Not too shabby of a segment title, right? Denmark is attached directly to the continent of Europe, where it's one of the smaller countries with an area of 43,095 kilometers squared. However, the Kingdom of Denmark also includes the Faroe Islands as well as the island of Greenland, bumping the area up to a significant larger size of 2,210,579 kilometers squared. Denmark is also a part of Scandinavia, which commonly is the term used for Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. While the term the Nordics also includes Finland, Iceland, and their associated territories such as Greenland, Faroe Islands, and Orland. Orland. Yeah, try to say it yourself. It's not easy. Denmark is connected to Europe via its only on-land neighbor, Germany. All the other borders are maritime, with Norway and Sweden to the north and United Kingdom on the very far west, all the way across the North Sea. On the opposite of Denmark, being the east side, we have the Baltic Sea, and in between these, we have three passages, which is called Name from West to East, Skagerrak, Katagat, and The Sound, or actually it's called Oresund, but my Danish probably isn't on point here. The population of Denmark is around 5,800 which ranks them pretty far down to the list of countries and dependent territories by population. And we can spot Denmark first at number 115 on this list that consists of 235 countries and territories. Danish or Dansk is the official language, and its closest relative is Norwegian, which is spoken in Norway. But most educated Danes do speak a second language as well, particularly English. But languages such as Turkish, Arabic, and German are also spoken at some scale, as well as a few other minority languages spoken mostly by members of the country's various ethnic groups. The official religion of Denmark is Evangelical Lutheran, but the country practices religious freedom, even though an overwhelming majority of Danes, about 85% of them, remained members of the state church called Folkekirken. But other than that, you'll find Jewish synagogues, mosques, and Roman Catholic churches around the country. The flag of Denmark is called Dannebrogen, and it's red with a typical Scandinavian white cross that extends all the way to its edges. And the Danes have taken pride in their flag for a very long time. In fact, it's the oldest continuously used national flag in the world, dating back to the 15th of June 1219. So what's the history of this country? Let's jump into our history segment and find out. Since the end of the last ice age, people have been migrating from the eastern and southern parts of Europe to the northern area, a place which today includes Denmark. The rich soil, closeness to water, and terrain has ever since helped shape Danish history and culture. One of the most notorious periods in Danish history is the Age of the Vikings. It began around 793 AD with the raid on the English tidal island of Lindisfarne. The Viking Age lasted for about 250 years, and under it, Danish Vikings were quite victorious under their time. One Viking in particular, called Sven Sukik, or Sven Forkbeard, if translated freely, and his son, Knut de Stua, which translates to something like Knut the Great, were once kings of Denmark, Norway, southern Sweden, Greenland, the Faroe Islands, Shetland, Orkney, and parts of England. Now that's a handful to keep track of. Then came Christianity. 
In 965 AD, the Danish king, Harold Bluetooth, yes, we know, that translation is amazing, and he was way ahead of his time with that name, got baptized, and the Christian religion became a big part of the Danish society. However, it didn't turn the once so brutal Danes into a people filled with peace and harmony just yet. They continued to fight to maintain and expand their lands a few hundred years more. The next major part in Danish history came in 1397 with the Kalmar Union that brought the kingdoms of Norway, Denmark, and Sweden together under a single monarch under the leadership of Queen Margareth I. This peaceful union lasted until the year 1523 when Sweden decided to break out of it, and this was the starting point of a long rivalry between Sweden and Denmark. In the end, Denmark lost the war to Sweden who took over the parts that today is southern Sweden. This loss was one that really made Denmark into the country it is today. They introduced hereditary and absolute monarchy in the country, and it helped them form the strong, well-organized state it is today. In World War I, Denmark remained neutral and after the war their economy started to evolve, all until April 9, 1940 when the still neutral Denmark was invaded by German troops. Overwhelmed by the German war machine, the country got occupied for five years under the Nazis. But the light returned to the Danish people. On May 5, 1945, Denmark was free from the German occupation, all thanks to the Grand Alliance, which consisted of the UK, US, and the Soviet Union. Denmark's economy started to flourish again, and they became more and more internationally involved with increased exports of design goods, furniture, bacon, and butter. Today, Denmark is a constitutional monarchy ruled by a representative democracy and a strong defender of free trade and human rights. So now you learned everything you need to know about the history of Denmark. So give Countries Explained some credit on your next essay, will ya? Now let's go over some of those fun, interesting facts that you have all been waiting for here in our next segment. The Danish language has no word for please. Danish people simply think that helping another person out is just something you do. And therefore, you should not have to beg for it. I kinda like that to be honest. Speaking of the Danish language, they do have another pretty remarkable word in there though. It's called huga, and it's basically a word for that cozy feeling of togetherness. The Danish pastry is actually from Austria. Most of us have heard about the Danish pastry called Wienerbrot or Danishes. However, most of us don't know that these are actually from some Austrian bakers that settled themselves in Denmark in the 1840s. Also, this is why it's called Wienerbrot or Viennese bread, bread from Vienna. The two oldest amusement parks in the world are in Denmark. Bakken, which is just outside of Copenhagen, is the oldest in the world, and the second oldest is called Tivoli Gardens and is based right in the middle of the capital. Lego is from Denmark. We all love it. I don't even care if you say no, I know you love it. Lego is amazing, period. And it was invented by the Danish guy Ole Kurt Christensen in the town of Billund in 1949. No matter where you're at in Denmark, there is a maximum of 52 kilometers to the ocean. So if you want an ocean view, move to Denmark apparently. So what's the country really famous for in the world? Well, like most Scandinavian countries, it's known for its high quality design and architecture. Brands like Bang & Olufsen are a major player in the sound business. But other than that, they also have the iconic red hot dogs called Pulsa. And then there is Carlsberg, the world famous beer, who probably has the best slogan in the world. Ah, you see what I did there? What about celebrities or other famous people? One of the greatest writers, Hans Christian Andersen, is from Denmark. And I'm sure you've heard about some of his tales, such as The Little Mermaid or The Ugly Duckling. Mads Mikkelsen is another famous person. The actor has been seen in movies such as Doctor Strange and Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Or what about the American series Hannibal, where he played Dr. Hannibal Lecter himself? And let's not forget about the physicist Niels Bohr, who in 1922 won the Nobel Prize in Physics in Recognition for his services in the investigation of the structure of atoms and the radiation emanating from them. Alright, that's that. We could probably speak for an hour more about this amazing country, but we promise you guys, we won't rant forever. Just a quick overview of each country in the world, for starters at least. Who knows what the future holds? What did you think of this video? We would absolutely love it if you took time to write a comment down below. Tell us some things we didn't mention about Denmark, and take the chance to educate your peers down in the comment section. Also, what country do you want to see next? 
As mentioned, we have no order here. We just go with the flow on this one. Give us some tips. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video and can't wait for more, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn notifications on so we can see you soon again. Goodbye for now, or farewell as they say in Denmark.